All right, so I'm gonna go over how to do the bottom assembly here. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Everything should fit nice and snug, but you may need to go into on shape and maybe tighten up some tolerances. Uh, so for the spool, uh, or I forget what I call this. I think I call it the uh, um, the bottom roller or the front roller. These are 608ZZ skateboard bearings. I don't think the ZZ is required. If I understand correctly, the ZZ just describes the uh, the encasing here. So like the part between the inner and outer of the bearing here, this little metal part. If you get a ZZ, I think it's metal. Uh, if you get some of the other ones, it might be plastic or something. So anyways, that's my understanding of the nomenclature for the bearings there. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your 608 bearings and you're just going to slide it right into one side. And it should fit in there nice and snug. Um, like I said, it's not critical if it falls out or something. Probably not the end of the world. Uh, but you get your other bearing, put it in the other side. Should snap in like that. Now this is probably the more difficult part of this assembly. And uh, just because the, it's pretty tight, the tolerance is here. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this rod. This rod and... I should start by saying, uh, or I should back up and say that the color of this does not matter. I just printed them in yellow and red just because I like the yellow and red. That's it. Uh, so anyways, you're going to take this rod and you're going to kind of start it in one side. You can pretty, pretty quickly feel where the inner of the bearing is. And this is where it might get a little tight, pushing it through that first bearing. Um, you can look on the other side here. See if I could get it in the video so you could kind of get things aligned here and then just kind of push this rod through and you might kind of have to move the uh, the roller around a little bit to kind of get the other side to come through and there you go. Um, if the rod is loose in there and it kind of slides around it's not a big deal honestly. Um, it should be pretty tight but if it does slide around once you put this in the container none of this assembly is going to be able to come apart. Now, if it falls out of the container, that's all another story. But when it's in the container, there's so little room, it's not going to come out on you. So, uh, just be aware of that. So, same thing for the other side here. Just put the bearings in. Pretty straightforward. Uh, then you take your rod. Kind of, you know, get it aligned here. Kind of slide the rod through there. And like I said, it might take a little bit of effort to start it. Then you go through the other side here. Kind of looking through this side. And sorry, I'm, I've got a different perspective than the camera here. So I'm trying to make it so you guys can see it. But again, you can kind of see where the rod and the bearing is looking through this side. Just kind of push it all the way through. And there you go, that's pretty much the bottom assembly, except this guy here. Um, the reason why I went with these Therm Pro, uh, let's see, let me get the model number one second. Sorry, they're, they're called uh, Therm, Thermo Pro TP357s. And the reason why I went with these humidity sensors is because they record... For one, they're Bluetooth, so you don't have to open up the container or anything if you're having a hard time seeing the number. You can just pull out your phone and look right at it. Uh, the other thing is, is they keep a running record. They keep a running record of the humidity in the system. So if you've got a leak, you can kind of see when the leak started, if it was a gradual leak, whatever. Uh, and it supposedly records that all the way up to a year. So... I was really excited about that. So that's why I designed this base around this particular uh, thermos uh, humidity sensor. Uh, it's actually really cheap too. I usually can find these for about 10 bucks. So uh, that's probably one of the bigger costs to the unit is this little Thermo Pro. If you don't want one of these, then, you know, I think, uh, I think I've set it up in the configuration where you can have the base without these little holders there if you want. But... Really straightforward, you're just going to take this and just slide it right in there. Everything's really nice and easy to assemble. So that's your base. Now I've already uh, created 
I've already aligned the basket and stuff in there. So generally, I mean, this is all preference, but generally for this bottom part, I like to face the the actual humidity sensor away from the nozzle when I drop it in there. So I just drop it in there like that. Fairly easy. Don't need to do anything else. Um, I like to do it that way because usually I have this nozzle facing the unit or facing the printer and so it's facing away from me and so I can just kind of look at the back side and see what the humidity is while it's printing. But you know, like I said, if you don't like that, it's super easy. Just flip the unit around and you know, go at it. So there you go. Now it's sitting on the front. <laughs> All right, so that's how to assemble the base, and uh, yeah.